Hi guys, welcome back to E.W legal series. Hope you guys are all well. Have something a little bit different, a little bit unique for you today. I am going to talk about my egg donor experiences, but with a little twist on it, it went wrong. So if that interests you guys, continue watching. <laughs> led me up to wanting to do the egg donor process when I was 18 and on my gap year and if you haven't already seen my gap year video I'll link it above I just wanted something a little bit more unique to do so essentially what led me up to wanting to do this and why I thought it was a good fit for me is for a few years now I've been wanting to freeze my eggs. Ever since I was a little girl I knew that I wasn't really interested in children and maybe that's societal, the way my experiences are shaped. I never really used to play with dolls or anything really girly related. I, <laughs> me and my dad just used to watch uh, crime thrillers, stuff like Chucky, you know, and even when I had dolls and my mum and dad gave me dolls, I never really used to play with them. I used to put them to one side. Don't know why, I just, I think that experience has very much shaped who I am today and what I believe in. I also wanted to do the process because it really empowers other women and that's something I'm very much interested in. The fact that someone can't conceive but I, I knew I didn't want children, I could give those them that rewarding and um, the benefit of the doubt experience. So yeah, essentially when I told someone that I wanted to freeze my eggs, won't name names, they literally looked at me like, you don't want children. It's like no I like <clears throat> for ages now it's, it's something I've been really passionate about I really want to freeze my eggs I know that I don't want children till later in life and so it will benefit me more and you know it, it was shocking that I was I was made to feel you know ashamed of myself for not wanting children almost and you know if I was literally <clears throat> put on this world for child rearing Oh, it's a bit it's a bit disheartening so guys what for those of you who don't know what the egg donor process is it's essentially where you give your eggs to someone who can't conceive through reproductive assistive technology with this though comes many health and legal implications so what are the health implications Essentially, I had to take a series of fertility drugs which stimulate the ovaries to produce several eggs at once. I had to self-administer these by injecting the fluid into my stomach, which was so scary at first, but I got used to it. Also had to take a series of blood tests, which are like that big, and it still makes me cringe now, but obviously they have to make sure that your blood's healthy. I developed some bruising from the injections, which I guess is common, but one of the most common symptoms of this process was weight gain. I was literally bloated, it literally made me look pregnant, and then I went on holiday because I didn't research it properly. So yeah, for those of you who are taking this process, definitely don't go on holiday because yeah, it makes you really bloated. It can also, in the worst cases, cause something called severe ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, which is very rare, but it can require hospitalisation. So from that, you can tell that the health implications are quite big and you need to thoroughly research into them. So what about the legal implications? So in the UK, the Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority regulates all fertility treatments. It requires full consent from both the owner and the recipient. Now consent is very much a legal issue. It doesn't matter whether it's expressed through legal documents, which is the most common method, or implied through actions in court, if it's just one or the other. Usually they infer the intention of your legal obligations, whether you meant to do something, whether you 
wanted to be in this contract so really what you do essentially in real life doesn't really matter however when you're doing the egg donor process I did both and it's probably better for legal certainty because just sitting down and talking to someone you gain mutual trust especially in this particular process they're gonna try and urge you to go forward with the process because they're gaining out of it it's a private process so they're gaining money out of it and so I would always advise to check over the contract as well there could be hidden clauses there could be things that um, a medical practitioner hasn't told you about they are professionals but sometimes like you know they're human they miss things out not always in the medical profession they have to be really clear and concise about what you're going into but it can happen so i would always recommend and this is applicable to anything reading the contract thoroughly and researching i would recommend a minimum of three times because it's very easy to miss something i myself didn't know the importance of contracts until i went to uni and guilty even now i can admit i don't read them that often they're very long-winded when you want to sign um, up to something you just you know you tick the boxes it's easy to do but when it's a decision that's going to affect your life then you definitely got to read the, the contract guys it's so important now as an egg donor as well you have to disclose any mental physical health or family problem issues that you suffer from disclosure is very much a legal issue too but it's applicable to any sort of organizational company it's essentially regarding the clarity of you as a person your past and to see if you're a suitable fit really so when you do job application forms and things like that you have to disclose whether you've ever been in trouble with the police so it's stuff like that now something that really scared me about this process was since the law changed in 2005 donors must be legally identifiable to the, ch the child uh, they have to have all their personal information collated and sent over now you, I want you guys to tell me what you think the legal consequences would be of this in comments down below because I'm still unsure. Do you think it's a burden? Could it have future consequences? The luckily thing is, is that you're not legally binded to them as a parent as a result of your donation, which essentially means that you'll have no legal connection to the child. You won't be named on the birth certificate. You won't have any financial obligations. So, here's the exciting part. What went wrong with the process? So essentially, my egg started declining. I knew that this was a risk because I was told that from the ages of 21 to 35, that's when you produce the most eggs. I was 18 at the time. So essentially, I could go forward with the procedure because of the, of the decline. They do match it really closely and they have to observe the infographics of the movement of the eggs and it for me it just wasn't working which probably suggests that maybe I'm not fit for even child you know child rearing anyway I don't know but yeah essentially guys I'm 21 now would I recommend it would I go forward with the process again absolutely not uh, I say this many reasons but one of the main reasons is I didn't realise until afterwards that for an egg donation cycle it costs £9,000. Obviously because it's privately funded, it's extortionate, the NHS don't fund it and I think the reason they don't is because maybe it's seen as a choice which logically I understand but at no fault of the woman's own she can't have a child so where does the balance lie really? And the egg donor for one cycle, which could make 10 families, which is highly rewarding, you know, without the egg donor, there's no process. They only receive £750. You work out the maths there. Is this proportionate? I didn't think so, but I want to hear your guys' views down below. The I have a friend who has recently started a vegan channel 
on YouTube. So if you're interested in trying vegan food, don't know where to start, but are interested in the vegan lifestyle, go check her out. I'm going to put the link below and it will also be in the end credits. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, go and like it and subscribe for further updates. Also guys, I'm going to start something considering my channel is student friendly and I was a career rep in my role at university. I'm very open and willing to help you guys with any sort of career related inquiries you have. If you want to drop me an email, I'll link it down below. Also, I'll link my LinkedIn if that's any easier for you. Yeah, so anything you have CV related, career related, job related, anything like that, even if it's legal related as well, of coursework, I'm willing to help. So thank you guys. Good luck, take care and I'll see you next time.